So I never knew Amazon made CPU coolers and when I was browsing Amazon one day I was quite surprised to see their own branded CPU cooler. So I decided to buy it but how well does a $16, admittedly I did buy it when it was on sale, CPU cooler perform? Well to find out I've done some testing to see how it calls a Ryzen 5 8600G. As for air coolers go, this one from Amazon is fairly basic. After all, it is Amazon Basics. Ha, <laughs> get it? But it has four heat pipes, which take the heat to the aluminium fins, and then that is blown away by the 92 millimeter fan. So as air coolers go, it's a fairly simple one, but it should be enough to get the job done. It supports all modern CPU sockets like AM5, which I use today, and LGA 1700. So no matter which CPU you've got, as long as it's not too powerful or power hungry, <clears throat> Intel 13700K, you should be totally fine. When I first looked at this cooler, I noticed it looked quite familiar, and that's because it's essentially a Cooler Master H411R. Like legit, the cooler looks exactly the same. The aluminium heatsink looks exactly the same. The heat pipes are arranged in the same way. So I'm guessing Cooler Master and Amazon have the same OEM who actually manufactures this cooler. On a positive note though, this cooler has RGB, which is controllable with a four pin RGB cable. So you can control it with your motherboard software like Gigabyte RGB Fusion, which I use today or Asus's AuraSync, or whichever one your motherboard has, if that makes sense. But a CPU cooler should be measured by how well it calls a processor, not by how it looks. So to see if the Amazon Basic CPU cooler is actually a good cooler, I've put it into the AM5 gaming PC behind me, where it will be calling a Ryzen 5 8600G, which is slotted into the Gigabyte B650M Gaming X AX motherboard. The memory I'm using today is Crucial Pro DDR5 5600 MHz memory, and all of this is housed inside the Deepcool CC360 ARGB case, but the side panel has been left off in my testing today. I've compared the Amazon Basic CPU cooler to the bundled Wraith Stealth with the 8600G and a more higher end CPU cooler in the Noctua NHU12S. The fans for all of these coolers has been left stock out of the box, which to be honest, this motherboard does seem to push the CPU cooler quite hard. So that is to be known. And lastly, my thermal paste of choice for all coolers today is Arctic MX4. You can find the links for everything I've used in today's video in the description with Amazon affiliate links below. I do make a small kickback from these, but it does really help out the channel. So if you buy anything through those, thank you very much. Starting off with the idle temperatures, and to be honest, I'm not really sure why I really bother with the idle temperatures, as if it's not really that hot, it doesn't really matter to a certain extent. Let me know if you think I'm just absolutely wrong about this. However, the Wraith Stealth saw the highest temperature at 36 degrees C. The Noctua NHU-12S was the best at just 30 degrees C, and the Amazon Basics cooler was closer to the Noctua than it was to the Wraith Stealth at 32 degrees. So I'd say this is passable for all callers if you ask me. Where we do see a big change though is in the gaming temperatures. The Amazon Basics cooler is much closer to the Noctua NHU-12S getting 63 degrees C compared to the Noctua's 61 degrees Celsius. But the Wraith Stealth is showing it is a bundled cooler getting 79 FPS in the gaming test. So that isn't particularly great if you ask me, and it's barely passable. Under an all-call workload in Cinebench R23, all callers do sort of have a hard time calling the 8600G. However, the Noctua NHU-12S is the best caller amongst the bunch, which is no surprise there to be honest and the amazon basics cooler trails it ever so slightly and the wraith stealth failed to stop the 8600g from thermal throttling as it reached 95 degrees c which is the throttle temperature for this processor so that's how well these coolers cool the ryzen 5 8600g but how do the sound
Looking at the Cinebench scores and not really that much changes with the single core performance, it's all within I would like to say 1% of each other, so you're not going to be noticing any difference right there. And the multi-core score does slightly go down with the Wraith Stealth Caller, which is to be expected as the 8600G did start to throttle. But the NHU-12S and the Amazon Basics Caller are very close to each other. And in fact, the Amazon Basics Caller did score higher than the Noctua one, so that is something to be known, but it's not really going to make that much of a difference in either work or gaming. Compared to the included Wraith Stealth Caller which comes with the Ryzen 5 8600G and many other 65 watt ish chips from AMD, the Amazon Basics Caller does a much better job at calling and in fact it was much closer to the Noctua Caller than it was to the Wraith Stealth which is something I wasn't expecting getting into this video. Truth be known, I was planning to sort of like meme on this caller until I tested it and then I realised it's actually not that bad. If we look at the gaming temperatures, for instance, this cooler did a much better job than the Rave Stealth. Like, I believe the 8600G was running like 11 degrees C cooler with the Amazon Basics cooler compared to the Rave Stealth. Actually, let me just pull up my data. Excel. Yeah, I know I use Excel. It's a terrible piece of software. I know, but... Yeah, it, it works most of the time. So tell a lie, the Amazon Basics cooler was 16 degrees C cooler, if you get it, than the Rave Stealth in a gaming workload, which was in Starfield, which is pretty CPU intensive. So yeah, that is a very big margin between these two coolers. All core cool workloads is where CPU cooling matters the most. And the Amazon Basics cooler did prevent the 8600G from thermal throttling in Cinebench R23. Whereas the Rave Stealth managed to, yeah, let the 8600G thermal throttle, which is not ideal as you will be losing performance and you will be degrading the silicon inside of the processor which is not good for the long run. And it was only running 3 degrees hotter than the Noctua NHU-12S which tells me these Ryzen CPUs are being ran pretty hard out of the box and you might need to do some tweaking or some undervolting or something like that to make sure that these CPUs are running a bit cooler. If you were to do that I suspect you'll be running at much better temps than what I did today. So it's cooling is quite decent for what it is, but what is the build quality like? And for the $16 I paid for it, which was admittedly sale pricing, I don't really have that much to complain about. The mounting mechanism is pretty brilliant if you ask me. Yes, it's not on the levels of Noctua's SecuFirm 2, which is the best mounting mechanism for CPU coolers. Shout out to the guys over at Noctua, but it's not that far behind. Admittedly, I only used it with the AM5 mount today, not the LGA 1700 or 1150X, which is basically almost every Intel socket out there. But I suspect you won't have any issues mounting this because it's a pretty seamless experience. As for the RGB, it's okay if you ask me. It's not particularly brilliant. It's not diffused well in the fan blades and it does kind of look a bit rubbish if you ask me. But if you're really after RGB, which is controllable, mind you, this CPU does have it, so that's a bit of a win, depending on who you ask. Especially as a lot of budget CPU callers are just left on the rainbow mode, and not everyone wants that, particularly myself, as you can see, with my lovely looking PC behind me. So the fact that you can actually change it is quite a big win, if you ask me. So... For the £12.74 I paid, which equals out to about $16 US at the current conversion rate, I don't really have that much to complain about this caller. I think it's a pretty good value, if you ask me. It cools well, even in an all core workload, for the most part. Well, at least it's closer to a much more expensive Noctua caller than it is to the boxed Wraith Stealth. So if you bought a Ryzen 5 3600 or 5600 or something like that and it didn't come without the caller and one of these is on sale, I would say it's probably worth picking up. But there is one elephant in the room. Thermal Wright make the Assassin X, which has a 120 mm fan, which is much bigger than the 92 mm one on this and it should perform quite a bit better than this at calling CPUs. 
and it only costs an extra two pounds over the sale price on this. Regularly, this goes for 20 pounds here in the UK, which is, I'm not too sure what that is in USD, I'll put it on the screen, but at that price, I'd much recommend the thermal right cooler over this but let me know in the comments if you want to see the thermal right cooler get tested so despite amazon's lack of originality because this is basically well no it is the cooler master h411r but with an rgb fan i think it's a decent cooler for what it is as long as you're not spending over like 13 quid on it i suppose so as long as you've got a low wattage chip and say you don't have a box cpu cooler or the box cpu cooler isn't cutting it for you i mean not bad so if you want to see me troubleshoot the am5 pc which i used in today's video that video will be right up there and there will be another video right down there if that one suits your fancy more with that being said i'll catch you in the next one and have a good rest of your day